Hey guys, welcome back to Critical Flick. Today I'm reviewing The Green Knight. So The Green Knight is a medieval fantasy film and it's based on the 14th century poem Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. And this film is directed by David Lowry who directed one of my favorite films of all time, A Ghost Story. This is very different from that film but it takes over some of those filmmaking elements that I really enjoyed about that one and brings it over to this one. Basically this film revolves around Sir Gawain who's played by Dev Patel who I have to say does a fantastic job as this character. There's a lot of range that goes into this person going from the beginning of kind of like a naive person who's trying to prove his worth to someone who's been on this epic journey and seen some of the spectacular things. And what happens is the Green Knight arrives at Camelot. He shows up and he challenges whoever wants to fight him can prove their worth and whatever they do to him he gets to do them one year later. It takes place on Christmas Day. And Sir Gawain steps up and decides he's going to prove his worth. Being the nephew of King Arthur, he wants to show that he's worth being, you know, having a seat at the table. And he stands up and he strikes down the Green Knight. He cuts off his head. And you think it all will end right there. And then slowly the Green Knight rises up, picks up his head and says, you know, I'll see you a year from now. Come, come and find me and you'll get what you deserve. So after that, it basically jumps forward to a year. You get a cool transition. You're seeing time passing, you're seeing this little play that kind of shows what's happening, what's going to be happening to the character, and then it jumps into this epic journey where he has to travel all the way to where the Green Knight is, and then, you know, obviously try to fight him or do whatever he has to do. And one of the things that I've always really liked about David Lowry's film, in particular with A Ghost Story, is how he's able to show the passage of time in a single frame or a single shot, and he does that a lot in this movie. You're able to transition a lot of time and a lot of space through just showing someone sitting there and seeing time pass by them, there's a really interesting part where it's showing kind of what would happen to Sir Gawain if he were left to die in one situation, or if when he actually fights the Green Knight, what would happen there. And I really like that. It subverts expectations because you're kind of seeing something play out, and then it draws back to the present day. So I really liked how he's able to utilize time without having to have a narrative thread through it. It kind of just shows it all in one shot. Speaking of the way the film is shot, it has some spectacular cinematography. It looks really, really good. Andrew Droz Palmera, who was also the cinematography from A Ghost Story, was brought on for this one. And I really like the way that movie looks. I really like the way this one looks in particular. There's some really wide open landscaping shots. It integrates CG into the real world in a way where it doesn't look too cheesy. Even though it's this big fantasy epic, it doesn't have the budget of maybe something that would be that big, like a Lord of the Rings or something like that. But I think it's able to capture the same ideas without having to do too much. It's filmed in locations where it looks very spectacular and then they integrate some things like these giants or this little fox that's traveling along with him. And it really is able to integrate a more grounded realism to it while throwing in those fantastical medieval elements that you would like to expect in a movie like this. Alicia Vikander actually plays multiple characters in the film, which is kind of interesting how they were able to do that. But it, it, it plays into the narrative really well, the way they were able to do it. But I think she does a really good job of playing two different people with two different power structures. Someone's kind of below the main character and the other one's a little above the main character. So their interactions with each other, it's really interesting. So I like that she was able to play these two different roles. And I think she did both of them really well. One of the things that I really want to jump into is the ending of the movie. So there's going to be obviously, this is a big spoiler warning if you haven't seen it. Maybe, you know, click off right now. But I think the ending of the movie is really well done. I think it completely subverts the expectations that I had for the film because initially you know he arrives and he's fighting the green knight and he doesn't die and you get to see how his life would play out and kind of the tragedies that might come from him actually defeating the green knight because he was never meant to defeat him and he kind of didn't have that honor that he should have had and then it cuts back to him actually dying and you know actually living up to what he was supposed to do from the beginning of the film and you learn about kind of how this character, how his growth was. Because in the initial ending, when you think he's not going to die, he doesn't really grow as a character. He doesn't live up to what he's supposed to be doing. But then when you go back and you see how things should have played out, I like that you got to see both ends of the coin. I think it's interesting to show those aspects because maybe if you showed him just arriving and his head gets cut off and it's the end of the movie, that's pretty anticlimactic. You would have had the whole what if situation. You may have been, did I watch this whole movie just to watch this guy die? But then you get those two endings I think it sums it up a little bit better. I honestly would like if some movies did that. You get to see kind of a, a true ending and then the alternative ending. So you get to decide for yourself maybe what you would have liked better as the audience. Not that that would work for every movie, but I think for this one in particular, it helps weave the narrative along and understand what the whole point of this journey was and the experience that he went through throughout the whole movie. So if I were to rate The Green Knight, I would actually give it a 9 out of 10. I think it's really well made. I think it's really well directed. I think all the performances were exceptionally solid, especially Dev Patel. He's always really good. He's kind of one of the more underrated actors. I feel like he's getting more and more 
you know, press recently, but he's always been a good actor. And I think he's really good in this one in particular. So if you checked out The Green Knight, let me know what you think about it. Was it everything you expected it to be? Because I honestly went into it expecting a lot from this movie. I love A24 films. I love David Lowry. I liked everyone involved in it. The whole cast is a bunch of actors that I've always enjoyed. So it definitely lived up to my expectations. So leave those comments down below. Let me know what you thought about the film. Remember to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.